It is Tuesday morning. We are live on YouTube and in your podcast feed. And today, April 9th, this is how I sound. If you're new in the last few weeks, you'd go, this guy sounds terrible. But if you've been around for the last two weeks, you know, I'm sounding better than I ever have in two weeks. Still recovering from vocal cord surgery. Still, it's fine for me to talk. It doesn't hurt. Doctor says all good. Keep it going. In fact, today, I'm going to see my new vocal coach. Little uh, physical therapy for the vocal cords. So we're on good. We're all good. If you're watching on YouTube, like and subscribe. And if you're listening to the podcast, leave a question in an Apple podcast review. That's how you get in the mailbag. Five stars. Leave a question. I'm going to get to a question from the podcast mailbag today. So get to that. Uh, try and spur a few more people to review. And I know it takes a little more effort than just sending me a DM, which you do all the time. Uh, but the podcast feed, get a question in there, leave a review, five stars. Thank you very much. All right. Hey, guys. Today's quote of the day. One of my most used quotes. By the way, if I talk like this, sounds a little better. One of my most used quotes, Maya Angelou. When somebody shows you who they are, believe them the first time. And the question today is three years from the Trey Lance draft pick. Have you, you learned your lesson about how to follow a 49ers draft? We are just over two weeks away from the draft. The 49ers have the 31st pick. What do they do? Well, I surveyed 25 mock drafts this morning. 25 mock drafts. And of those 25 mock drafts, these are not just random bullshit people. There's a lot of random bullshit people that put out mock drafts. Uh, these are people that really cover the league. People that I have some expectation have some insight into the league. They are of the same kind of echelon of person that everybody thought these idiots know nothing when they spent weeks, maybe even a couple of months, predicting the 49ers were going to draft Mac Jones. So many people made a list of all the people that said the Niners were going to draft Mac Jones. And they said, I will never believe this person again. I'm crossing them off the list. They lied to me. They were victims of groupthink. They were just regurgitators instead of reporters. They're dead to me. Well, I've said for three years, that was a mistake. And um, the question is, if you made that mistake, have you learned your lesson? All the reporters that said, Mac Jones, Mac Jones, Mac Jones, Mac Jones. They were wrong. They were ultimately wrong. It's black and white. It's wrong or right. They either drafted Mac Jones or they didn't. And we all know they didn't. They drafted Trey Lance, which as it turned out was also wrong. But. What I said at the time was that if you dismissed people who said they were going to draft Mac Jones as being wrong, then you were ignoring something else that was happening, which was that the Niners were actually considering Mac Jones. I based most of that opinion on a phone call I had late after the first round of the draft in which a person with very intimate knowledge of what the 49ers would have been thinking in the draft room, told me. Yeah, it came down to Trey Lance and Mac Jones. So all those people that said it's Mac Jones, it's Mac Jones, it's Mac Jones, while they were wrong, there was a lesson in that. They did know something. And the 49ers did allow them, intentionally or unintentionally, to know something. So with that information in mind, how many of the 25 mock drafts said the Niners are going to draft an offensive lineman this year? The answer is 64% of them. Now, we could have gone to 100 mock drafts. Who knows? Keep going. But of the 25 mock drafts that I surveyed today, and you'll, I guess just you're here on this channel, you'll have to listen to this podcast. You'll have to trust that I uh, selected solid mock drafters. 
uh, of the uh, 60, uh, of the 25, 16 of them offensive linemen. Now, not all the same offensive linemen. Most of them selected Tyler Guyton for the 49ers, some Jordan Morgans in there, um, uh, a couple of Marius Mims in there, but most of them selected Tyler Guyton. 20% of those 25 or five selected a defensive lineman, Chop Robinson. This is this is nothing to keep in mind. Only five defensive linemen mock drafted to the 49ers, but four times uh Chop Robinson was selected in mock drafts. Only player with more mock selections to the Niners was Tyler Guyton was six. So even though defensive linemen much less selected by percentage for the Niners, Chop Robinson actually was selected more than offensive linemen. So keep that in mind. Maybe that's a pick. Uh, cornerbacks, two. Wide receivers, two. So uh, a couple of a couple of extra, you know, a couple of picks in there for other positions. But the question is, is everybody group thinking it again? Is everybody just going, well, I see a bunch of mock drafts that say Niners, so I'll say Niners. Everybody's just saying Niners because everyone else is saying Niners. Or do the Niners' intentions match up with the availability of a particular position in this draft? I think it's most likely that the 49ers draft an offensive lineman. I've thought that for a while. The basic reason is they need one, and there's a lot of them. Now, they're drafting near the end of the first round, so uh, they may have to take the eighth best offensive lineman, or they could trade up and take an offensive lineman. But uh, I think that's the most likely outcome. Now, it doesn't mean it's the guaranteed outcome, just like Mac Jones was not the guaranteed outcome. But I think it's the most likely outcome. Uh, Go back to something that Albert Breer wrote a few months ago. Albert Breer wrote this when uh, Trey Lance got traded to the Cowboys. So this is, you know, hindsight. He's telling us what he knows after the fact. This is what he wrote. The initial decision on who to take at number three Came in, came down to indeed Lance and Mac Jones. We could argue the Niners should have selected Justin Fields, but that another that's another discussion for another day. Uh, San Francisco made the call to take Lance based in large part on what it would mean for the offense. By 2021, a good percentage of the league was running a form of this offense, which meant defenses were practicing against it. Thus, it became important for the Niners to develop it. Jones, of course, could run Shanahan's offense. Lance could evolve it. And that, in the end, was the biggest differentiator in this decision. Now, what Albert Breer doesn't write there, but he kind of is between the lines, is you don't need to draft a guy second overall or third overall, in this case, to run Shanahan's offense. You can draft a guy dead last to run 262, 262, remember that number. It's Brock Purdy's draft position. You can draft a guy basically anywhere to run the offense, but you got to draft a guy with exquisite, unique skills to evolve the offense. That's what they tried. That's what I supported. Uh, That's what I wanted them to do. If you're new here, I said draft Trey Lance, and I've talked a lot about why uh, 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 the mistakes in judgment that what I uh, miscalculated in that pick being the amount of uh, how much harder it would be to be on a good team versus how much easier it would be to be on a good team. Um, so <clears throat> I think that's a significant lesson that, you know, even though the Niners don't say a lot, Kyle Shanahan doesn't say a lot, John Lynch doesn't say a lot, the NFL kind of reporting community does get information about what they like, does get information about what they want to do. Here's another example. Uh this happened a couple of days ago. 49ers web zone um, captured it. Tony Pauline said, uh, tweeted this. This was uh, three days ago. Tweeted this. Louisville running back Isaac Garendo has an official 30 visit with the Texans. Also, the 49ers have a third round grade on Garendo and will consider him as a day two, uh, as day two closes out. Now, if that tweet had not been deleted, I wouldn't have thought anything of it, but that tweet did get deleted, which makes me think a lot of it. 
the fact that uh, Garendo is visiting the Texans is not some state secret. So there's no reason to delete it. The only reason to delete this tweet is one of two reasons. That's two reasons, not one, only two reasons. One is it's inaccurate, right? That could be one reason. Well, he finds out that the Niners actually don't have a third round grade on Isaac Garendo and uh, that they don't consider him as a day two pick. And Tony Pauline decides, oh, that's wrong information. I don't want it out there. Now, keep in mind, if it was incorrect information, the 49ers would be happy with it. You don't want everybody to know what you're doing. You don't want everybody to know you kind of like Mac Jones. And yet everybody kind of knew correctly that they liked Mac Jones. You don't want everybody to know, especially it's one thing when you're drafting third and you kind of know, who, you're not, you kind of know in that draft, they knew who was going one, Trevor Lawrence. And you basically knew who was going to Zach Wilson. It's another thing in the third round when a million things can happen and you don't want people to know what you want. This this tweet went down, presumably, because it was too true. My guess, somebody told Tony Pauline this, but not to tweet. And then he tweeted it, and then it had to come down. Tony, the hell are you doing, bro? You're not supposed to put that out there. And, you know, like many things, uh, sometimes even apologies. The apology brings attention to the transgression, the deletion brings attention to the accuracy. So like, I, I believe that, right? We talk all the time about how the Niners don't leak. There's a lot of things they don't leak, right? Interpersonal relationships, how Kyle and John work together. Like a lot of that stuff stays in house, but who they like in drafts, who they like in drafts tends to be, uh, or has been, not, I shouldn't say tends to be, has at times been kind of uh, um telegraphed right and in this case i think that it's probably happening just like i think it is when it comes to the offensive lineman and just like it was with mac jones if you only judge people on everything they're right about then you're going to miss information and the information you're going to miss is well why were they wrong were they wrong on mac jones because they had the incorrect information or were they wrong on mac jones because the 49ers changed their mind or the 49ers did something slightly differently than everybody had been led to believe or was the person who everyone was talking to a Mac Jones guy, but ultimately it wasn't a Mac Jones guy. They got to make the pick. There's always information there if you want it. So the, the question is, are you willing to accept it or are you going to go surface level? Uh, uh, Mike Silver, uh, Albert Breer, uh, Lance Zerline, uh, Daniel Jeremiah, uh, must be idiots. Um, I, I don't know exactly if all those guys were mocking Mac Jones to the Niners, but basically everybody was. Well, must be dummies. Yeah, okay. You go ahead and disregard uh, that information, and uh, I think you do so at your uh, at your own risk. So there's, there's a couple things to keep an eye on. Uh, a couple other things to keep an eye on. Drew Brees' hairline is back, baby. Did you guys watch Drew Brees on the pregame show before the national championship game last night? His his uh, his Purdue Boilermakers lost to UConn. Uh, started out looking like it was going to be a great game. It was not a great game. UConn was the pick the whole way, uh, beginning to end. But Drew Brees, his hair is looking fresh. I've had a few people. No one has brought back. Oh, God, this mic stand. No one has brought back Shave It or Save It yet. I've taken a few submissions in my Instagram DMs. Nobody's wanted to go public yet with, uh, hey, guy, can you tell me if I should keep my hair, shave it, cut it short, that sort of thing. But uh, if you watched Daniel Tosh's last podcast on YouTube, he goes through and he showed, he goes through PRP treatments. Daniel Tosh has really brought his hairline back uh, in the last several, several years. And Breeze is looking good. Now he's still doing a little bit of the comb over thing. Uh, if you're watching on YouTube, you see this photo that I have of him. It's not a straight on shot, so it's hard to see his right temple, but, um, hair's looking thick. His hair's looking thick. When you look back at, you know, what it looked like before and you look at it now, it's looking thick. He used to have it like really long so we could comb it forward. So, uh, I don't know. Maybe he's doing the PRP. I don't know. Uh, you know, it doesn't, you don't necessarily have to do plugs. You just do a uh, PRP, uh, they give you your plasma. They inject your plasma like 
30 injections into your head, which for 60, I don't know how many it is. Uh, I guess it probably depends on the doc. Uh, I, I'm not doing it, but I can't rule. I can't say that I wouldn't. I'd love to tell you I would bald gracefully, but I can't say for sure that I would. So uh, there you go. Drew, Bree Drew Brees going strong on the dome. Uh, okay. Question. This comes from Vince. This comes from Vince on uh, Apple podcast. Vince left a, a review five stars. Thank you, Vince on Apple podcast, Spotify. You can leave a, you can put five stars if you want, but they don't let you leave a question. Like Apple podcast lets you leave a, a question. Uh, and, and you can DM me on Twitter. You can DM me on Instagram as well. And uh, oh, th those will work in the mailbag. Appreciate that. But you know, if you could, I, I like the review because it just helps out the pod uh, stream. Anyway, Vince in Naples, Italy says, uh, listing in Italy, there's nothing wrong with the Lance trade. Uh, there's nothing wrong with the Lance trade and upcoming Vikings trade if you get the right guy. We talked uh, a few weeks ago about the Vikings beginning the process of moving up in the draft to essentially do the same thing that I just did in the Trey Lance trade. Uh, Vince goes on to say, if Lance had worked out, it wouldn't have mattered if they traded two extra picks. Nobody cares about the draft compensation if the guy's really good. I'm a big Bears fan. I can't wait to see Caleb Williams. The Bears roster is far superior to that of teams who normally draft first overall. Keep up the great work. Of course, that's true. Uh, if you nail the quarterback pick, everybody's happy about it. Nobody's mad about it. But that is like the biggest, you know, it's capital I, capital F. It is the biggest if. So we don't really get to uh, apply that logic to the 49ers because um, you have to complete the action, right? Uh, you know, when somebody crosses somebody over on a basketball court and the guy falls down, everybody stands up. You still got to make the shot. And the Niners, I guess you could argue, kind of crossed somebody up, we thought, but uh, airballed the jumper. Airballed the jumper, but they got to stop on the other end, came back and hit another shot. That's that's uh, Brock Purdy to complete the analogy. Yeah, I mean, look, the Bears have DJ Moore. They just got Keenan Allen. Um, they got DeAndre Swift. They uh, Colt Komet, solid, sure. Uh, they they extended Montez Sweat. They have a, a secondary that's full of uh, talented players with Jalen Johnson. They drafted Jaquan Brisker in the second round. They added Kevin Bayard. So, uh, yeah, they are more talented uh, than, than most teams that are drafting number one overall. It'll just be interesting to see in the NFC this year kind of where the, the weight shifts among playoffs teams, right? Somebody still has to win the NFC South, whether it's Tampa, New Orleans, um, uh, Atlanta, Carolina. Maybe it's Atlanta this year with Kirk Cousins. Wouldn't shock me. I mean, Atlanta won seven games last year, but – I'm not going to say it's easy to forget. I think people remember Chicago won seven games last year. Chicago and Minnesota won the same number of games last year. Now, Cousins got hurt, so maybe that's not fair to them. But Chicago won seven games last year. Look, we can debate. Some people do. Caleb, is Caleb going to be, you know, a top five quarterback, whatever? He is going to be an upgrade on Justin Fields, right? I, I mean, to me, that's a guarantee. Uh, Trey Lance was not an upgrade. Uh, you know, whether or not he turned out to be a franchise quarterback, he wasn't even an upgrade on Jimmy Garoppolo. Caleb Williams is uh, is going to be an upgrade. Um, is going to be an upgrade. So, uh, yeah, sh Chicago to me, like, is Jordan Love definitely taking the next step and they go from nine wins to 10 wins or 11 wins? Maybe. Is Philly going to continue without Jason Kelsey? Uh, Rams won 10 games last year. Lions, are they going to keep it rolling at 12? I could see them winning 11, falling back a little bit. Dallas, 12. Niners, 12. So, uh, yeah, Chicago's got it. Chicago has a chance, without looking at their schedule yet, Chicago has a chance to uh, to make the playoffs this year. So, Vince, Naples, Bears fan. All right, let's get to uh, some of your comments here. And let's start with, uh, comments on my voice. The freak says, sounds like guy got kicked in the nuts. That's a good one. Uh, Brandon says, maybe just take a day off. Uh, how about you take a day off, Brandon? What the hell are you doing? What are you talking about? <laughs> 
look, uh, people have asked me, guy, why are you doing this when you sound so bad? And the answer is not because it's pleasing to your ears or it's great content for you. The answer is if somebody wants it, it'll be there. And really it's selfish for me. If I stopped doing the show until I sound at hundred percent, I would be like, this is, I'm into the third week now of this recovery taking longer than I thought. Uh, I would be so out of rhythm, out of touch. Uh, I'm all for vacations, taking time for yourself, that sort of thing. But at this point right now, I'm not on vacation. Like I'm not in Italy. <laughs> so uh, I, I, I'm going to continue working while I'm available to work. And uh, for those of you that uh, consume it, thank you. If you say to yourself, I cannot listen to this. I am not offended. Like I've had some people damn me like, hey, man, I'm, I'm still listening. I just want you to know. Uh, good, hope you get better soon. I don't, I, thank you. That's great. But you don't have to do whatever you want. I'm not offended. Uh, I just, uh, you know, if you're going to take a break, just check back in occasionally uh, to, you know, for whenever it is that I get back to a level that makes it easy for you to listen. Uh, let's see here. Rick says, Guy, how are you doing? Good morning. How are you feeling? You don't sound too good. Oh boy. RFK. Junior impersonator. Yeah, RFK is on the list. It's it's really, you know, like the amount, I've had to tell my wife a few times, like, stop. You can't walk away from me in a public place because I'm calling your name and you, you can't hear me. You know, I'm like, hey, do you want another drink? And she can't hear me. So I, you got to stay nearby. All right, I can kind of whistle, still normal. Um, uh, Cynthia says, you are sounding better, guy. Little by little, one step in front of the other, sounding better than death. I am currently sounding better than death. That is, uh, I would say that's that's true. Uh, Rock asks, how long until the voice returns? Well, I mean, it needs to be soon. Today is Monday, or today is Tuesday. So I've got this week and then next week and next weekend, believe it or not, I'm going to Corvallis on Friday. So a week from this Friday, like home, less than two weeks away for the Oregon State spring football game. Oregon State spring football is here. I am calling the Oregon State spring football game. I'm calling it. I don't know what kind of game it's going to be, but we're doing that show on TV on Pac-12 Network uh, in less than two weeks. So, you know, when I talked to the doc like a week and a half ago, he said, oh, you'll be less than two weeks. You'll be good. And I am feeling better every day, but yeah, we're close to the time rock Eastwood where I'm like, uh, am I going to be okay in time? We're definitely in that, in that zone for sure. So we'll see. Uh, is there, Lee asks, is there an auto tune type of voice app booster plugin? Maybe I, maybe I should do something like that. Our Stucky, uh, who will be hundred percent first who funga, Greenlaw or Haberman? Well, it's not going to be Greenlaw. Could it be Hufunga? I don't know. He better be 100% soon. Um, I think it's going to be me. I'm very optimistic. I think it's going to be me. I think it's going to be me. Uh, KM101 says, people can be mean, man. Just be kind to one another. He's going through recovery. It's all good. Thank you for the defense, KM1031. I appreciate it very much. It's all good. As I've said before, I've I've been in the, uh, I've been on the internet a long time. I think I said this to Ethan Strauss the other day. I was on Ethan's podcast, which if you missed it, it was fun. If you could take this voice for 90 minutes, somehow he did. Um, but we talked a lot about my voice for he's interested in my vocal cord surgery. Uh, and I said to him, I think most interactions on the internet in which people get offended are, they're not misunderstandings necessarily, but they're just because people on the internet come at conversations from different places. And I think like most of it, I know a lot of people are going to disagree because they end up in like angry conversations, but I think most of it and like comments here, a good example is totally good natured. And because I approach it that way, if you're trying to actually offend me, I, I won't be offended because I just approach it as if you're fucking around. Like I fuck around with people in the same way, 
you fuck around in a group chat. Like I just treat it all like a group chat. So thank you for the defense. But I actually don't think most people are as mean as somehow it gets uh, interpreted. Dale says, whiskey, grease those pipes with better whiskey. What would you recommend, Dale? You know what I've been? Uh, when I go to the bars now, like I'd say for the last good period of time, if I go to the bar, uh, I, it was a lot of Tito's and soda, obviously. That was real. But I also have enjoyed, and people tell me this comes with age a little bit, gin. Gin and tonic. Uh, Marcella said, guy's voice is pissing me off, LOL. Hey, me too. Uh, affordable or expensive whiskey? Good. Oh, ex expensive? Uh, expensive is the answer to that question, right? If somebody says, do you want a recommendation for affordable or expensive? I think the, the, the correct answer is, tell me about expensive whiskey. Uh, there was a, uh, a 49ers mock here. Somebody gave me a mock draft. Where did this go? Uh, 49ers Sports Talk. What do you do over on Sport, 49ers Sports Talk? 49ers Sports Talk said, uh, I took Xavier Worthy in my latest mock draft using a best player available model. Okay. Um, I'd, be, I'd be surprised. I would be surprised. Uh, if you want expensive bourbon, Pappy Van Winkle. I mean, that's the most expensive, isn't it? Can I, like, when I ask somebody for a wreck, when I go to cask, which is where I go to buy, like, get, if I'm buying somebody some a, a, alcohol as a gift, I went there recently, bought a, a bottle of whiskey as a gift that was, I think, like, I think it was like $150. And when you go in, like, I don't know anything about whiskey. So I, I said, just like, where's well, how much do I have to spend to get something really nice? And they said, well, you know, you can get something really nice for 40 bucks like that. You don't have to spend $150, but their thing was what the guy told me was he thought that like over 150, 200, you're kind of, you know, like 400 bucks. Now maybe, maybe 400 bucks is like, you can get the best thing you've ever had, but it kind of gets hard to tell the difference. I don't know if that's true or not, but uh, you know, part of the, if you're buying a gift, it's like you want the person to know you spent 150 and not $38, even if they would enjoy the $38 bottle just as much. So, uh, Mike says we need guy to interview JFK Jr. Hey, uh, uh, Shohei Otani hit a home run yesterday. I believe that's three home runs now for Shohei Otani, which is bad for me. Because on prize picks, promo code HAM50, sign up. On prize picks, uh, I did several season-long uh, tickets. And you can go more or less. And I've got uh, less on uh, 38 and a half homers for Otani. So um, let's keep an eye. Keep an eye. Uh, comment. I need Guy to do an entire Simpsons episode. You know, I got a DM from a listener on Instagram recently named uh, Reza. And uh, he does uh, he does some work for The Simpsons. He said, hey, let me play with your let me play with your little logo. I said, all right, go ahead and play with it. So we'll, we're, uh, we'll wait and see what Reza comes up with. Jay says, uh, let's talk about Mick drafts. We get it. Your voice is different. I'm just answering questions, bro. We're just talking. Um I talked about mock drafts at the beginning and uh, I think I paid that one off 64% of the mocks, 64%. I know I'm just, you fuck with me. I fuck with you. 64% uh, of the mock drafts say uh, offensive line. And I believe it. Now the question I, to me, the big question is going to be a, do they do that? Right. That's obviously the number one question. The number two question is, oh, how, how committed to it are they? And are they willing to move up for a particular offensive lineman? Like, would they go up 
a lot would they trade a lot of draft capital because they think, all right, like, because I do think this is logical. Um, I think it's logical for them to say, we need depth for the future. We need depth. We got 10 picks. We got to nail a bunch of these picks. But they could also argue, and I do think this is, like, I would kind of make this argument. If we think we're not getting an offensive lineman at 31 that's ready to play right now, then the question becomes, do we need an offensive lineman right now to help us win the Super Bowl in 2024? A different one, a new one. And if the answer to that question is yes, how far up do we have to go to get an offensive lineman that plugs in right now as better than Spencer Burford, John Feliciano, or Colton McKibbins? Does that person exist in this draft? And if the answer is yes, how far up do we have to go to get that person? And if they're like, all right, we need that. Let's answer that question first. Yes, we need that. We need a guy better than either our right guard or our right tackle right now today. Does that guy exist in this draft? If the answer to the first question is yes, and the answer to the second question is yes, then the third question is, well, can we get that guy by going to 15? Can we get that guy by going to 20? Is that guy Fuanga from Oregon State? Do we like that guy a lot? Probably do like that guy a lot. I've heard. Um, and uh, if that's the case, what do we do? Now, I think it's challenging, right? If you're not going like top 13, top 10 in any draft to get an offensive lineman um, that can that you can count on right away. And I think the better way to put it is, can you get one that is, will you get one that is better than Burford, McKivich, Feliciano? Is that a bar that's just too high to cross right now? Uh, I can understand you saying, yeah, even though those guys don't feel like championship offensive linemen um, or at least guys that, you know, help elevate you to a championship, help Brock more this year. You could argue we were in the championship with him, could have won the championship with him, might have lost the championship because of one decision by Spencer Burford. Um, but they're good enough. Let's do something somewhere else. Or let's do something at 31 with Tyler Guyton or uh, Jordan Morgan that, you know, they become the next guy next year or something like that. Okay, fine. It's less sexy, but I mean, it's logical. If it's going to, if you're going to have to go to 10, I'm looking at Daniel Jeremiah's last, last mock draft. Uh, Fuanga, he has him going 10th. If you, you're not getting to 10th, right? So, I mean, that's, that's what we got to keep an eye on. By the way, um, some of you catching the first show in a while, maybe. So if you're not catching the first show in a while, you've heard me say this many times. The uh, show I did with Jeff Schwartz, Jeff with the G, G-E-O-F-F Schwartz, Search it on the YouTube or just scroll down in the podcast feed. Ton of offensive lineman talk. It holds up. Uh, he tells you who we don't like and who we do like. And I say we because I, Jeff is a Jeff votes for the best offensive line in the country in college football every year. So he is dialed an offensive lineman. So when he says I like this guy, I don't like this guy. I just I just roll with him. Uh, comment. Hey guy, uh, first time catching your live show. Sounding better every day. How's this year's corner class? And do you have any names of players you'd like to see go at 31? Uh, I tell you, Kool-Aid McKinstry would be pretty intriguing. You know, that's the old, um, uh, the old uh, kind of, you know, Eagles. You look at the Eagles and they just draft SEC dudes. Kool-Aid could be in that range. Um, Cooper DeGene had his... uh, Pro day. And uh, I saw a video of him dunking yesterday. I mean, that would be another guy that has been, yep, you've seen him mock to the 49ers a few times. Like, I love productive players at 31. That's what I would prefer if you want instant impact and projection. Uh, But I like productive players. Play him at corner, play him at safety, play him at nickel uh, for a team that still has some questions not just at safety in terms of health, but just what is next um, after this year when when uh, uh, 
Hufunga is going to be a free agent. Even if he comes back healthy, he's going to be a free agent. Mooney Ward soon, maybe. Uh, what's going to be the future for Ambry Thomas or like that other corner spot? So I think Cooper, uh, DeGene, and he can return, which makes him, I think, pretty attractive. Uh, so not that that's not a big, I wouldn't let it break the tie, but I, those are two guys to me that look like they're going to be around then. And I would, uh, I'd be excited about both those picks. So both they're young. Yeah. So there's two. Those would be two. Um, can you go later? I'm just scrolling through kind of a big board of guys that see if there's anybody that stands out that I would like later. Um, talked about this with uh, oh, well, well, he's not a corner though. Cole Bishop is a safety I like. I, I actually do think the Pac-12 had a lot of good safeties last year. But I do think whichever one of those guys you draft, you like you would like for them to play pretty quickly. Pretty quickly. So, all right. Uh, that's that for this. It doesn't hurt me to talk, but it wears out a little bit. Um, I enjoy doing shows with uh, Lombardi the other day because uh, we can go longer and go back and forth. And um, it gives me just little moments to rest. I'm very excited about Thursday. Thursday morning-ish, late morning. I think 11 a.m. I'm going to bring a guy on this channel that has not been on before and is really smart and is really into quarterbacks, knows quarterbacks well because he coaches quarterbacks. He was an excellent college quarterback. His name is Alex Brink, and he's a quarterback coach now. And he's a, uh, an analyst for uh, Washington State football. And so he's got a close perspective on Caleb Williams, on Bo Nix, on Michael Penix, Cam Ward, who's an intriguing prospect. Um, and because he's a quarterback coach, he's also kind of followed Brock Purdy. And I want to ask him about all those guys, as well as what is going on with quarterbacks? Are they getting better? Are they getting worse? Are offenses getting dumber? Are offenses getting smarter? Does he think Brock Purdy can handle what would it take in the Shanahan offense? Because he studies offenses. What would it take in the Shanahan offense to help him uh, evolve in terms of protections, that sort of thing? So we're going to do that on Thursday. I think you guys, I, trust me on this. You're going to love it. Alex is really sharp. I used to interview him a lot on Sirius XM radio when I did that. And uh, super sharp guy, deep in the quarterback world, like deep, deep, deep in the quarterback world. And uh, get some perspective on him. So he lives, he lives in the state of Oregon. So I'm excited about that. That'll be Thursday. Um, but I'll, I, I expect to be back Wednesday morning with, um, with some more stuff. So anyway, thanks for hanging out YouTube. Thank you. Uh, bearing with my voice. Thank you. Or, I, there was a minute this week and I was like, eh, is this voice kind of cool? Does it add some gravitas? And then I try to like speak and it's just, you know, a pain. So anyway, got the vocal coach today. Hopefully uh, we get some, uh, we make some progress, get some good feedback. And um, yeah, thanks y'all for being here. Appreciate it. And I'll talk to you soon.